So this is the watch that I just purchased. The reference is the SLA051, otherwise known as the Uemura. Now this watch is just fantastic. I've been interested in this one, specifically this color scheme since it was announced in 2021. And I finally pulled the trigger and I think I have this Seiko Diver to thank for that. This is the SRPC23. It's a discontinued turtle with an anthracite dial, a black bezel on a bracelet. It's a really lovely, affordable watch. And after buying this one, I kind of remembered just how much I love Seiko. I've never quit the brand. I've, I've, oh man, I can't even keep track of how many I've owned in my time as a watch collector. Uh, but there have been times where I have been less into Seiko than at other times. And so getting this turtle and seeing just a classic value rich Seiko diver, uh, it made me want this version, the SLA051. Uh, this is a premium product when it comes to finishing and movement and dial details, but it's still very similar to this SRPC23. And I showed my wife the two, and she said that they look the same, and she asked me if I was going to sell one of them because they're so similar. And uh, I know a lot of you right now are typing, Bruce, you're going to flip both of them, uh, which may happen. I don't know. I never have a concrete plan when it comes to collecting, but I don't want to get rid of this turtle because I didn't spend much on it and it's so good and it's so hard to find in this type of condition being discontinued for several years now. It would make no sense to get rid of this. And then this one here, this new edition, the 051, it's very similar to the turtle. It has the same color scheme. It has visual uh, you know, similarities when it comes to the design, but this one is at the next level. And that's one of the things that I really love about it. Uh, this one has fantastic finishing. Note the circular brushing on this bulbous, curvaceous cushion case and you know, you just don't see brushing like this on a watch that costs less than $3,000 very often. And it's not just the nice brushwork. This has a stepped edge here to the case with very nice polishing. The dial details are crisp and sharp. It has classic Lumabrite that's bright and potent. This has upgraded bezel action. In fact, I would say that this watch is close to Grand Seiko level in terms of quality and finishing and movement, but it's still far below the price of a Grand Seiko diver. You know, you want to buy a mechanical Grand Seiko, you are going to be spending at least probably close to $5,000 or a little bit more, maybe less if you buy it pre-owned, but it's still a significant amount of money to spend on a watch. And this one, I would say, is at least 80 to 85% a Grand Seiko level watch in terms of all of those details and whatnot. But it's still uh, far below a Grand Seiko price-wise, coming in at just under $3,000 full retail. Now, can you relate to me? I have a watch radar at any given time. Uh, of watches I'm interested in that I would like to buy, that I would like to try. I'm more interested in these watches than the scores of other ones that I appreciate, that I admire, but maybe I'm not realistic about uh, spending the money to add them to my watch rotation. Or perhaps some of those watches are out of my price budget. That's certainly the case in many instances. Uh, do you keep a list like I do? And if you do, do you get to all of the watches? Or like me, uh, sometimes do they come in and out of that radar or that list? And maybe it takes a watch like this turtle to uh, kind of push you over the edge to finally getting that watch that you've been long interested in. I'd be curious to hear if there are more people like me out there uh, when it comes to collecting watches and specifically when it comes to Seiko divers. Now back to this one. This one has an 8035 movement within with a four hertz beat frequency. I'm going to drop in some footage of an 8L caliber that I had in the SLA033. I had my watchmaker open that up so I could exactly see what the finish level was and everything when it comes to the movement because some collectors say that the 8035 is just an undecorated Grand Seiko movement and I would say that's not true. It's related to mechanical Grand Seiko calibers 
<laughs> but it is far from undecorated. In fact, I think it has gorgeous finishing, and I would love Seiko to do open case backs on the 8L35. I think it's worth looking at. Now, this watch also has a pretty decent bracelet as far as Seiko bracelets go. The links are short. It's a five-link style. There's a milled clasp. It's a pin and center tube style connection between the links. And I think that the 6105 design looks fantastic on a bracelet. And that's one of the things that I didn't like about the SLA-033 that was more faithful in its recreation, but uh, definitely didn't have this good bracelet option. And that brings me to its similarities to a Marine Master 300, a watch that I have owned six different versions of in the past uh, maybe 10 or so years. It's a watch that I can't quit. I love the Marine Master 300 and I buy one. And then after a while, I remember how hefty and top heavy it is, how tall it is, how the bracelets have ugly long links and how the clasp is bulky. And eventually I flip out of it and then I miss one and then I rebuy one in a different color scheme. And then it's just a rinse and repeat. It's a vicious cycle. I love the Marine Master, uh, but I, I just can't make one stick. And that watch is very related to this Uemura, this 051, because it shares the same caliber. Uh, but this one is thin. This one is comfortable. This one is wearable. This one doesn't have a bulky clasp. This one doesn't have abnormally long links. And I think stylistically, again, they're pretty similar. They both harken back to the late 1960s, early 1970s in terms of Seiko design language. So I wonder, will this watch kind of replace my desire for a Marine Master 300? Will this one stick around because it is wearable, but it still has all of those lovely details that I appreciate about a similarly priced Marine Master 300? I'll keep you posted about that, but most likely I will buy another Marine Master 300, my seventh one, uh, whenever they release another variation that I just feel I can't live without. Now, not only do I enjoy the design here, this tribute to the 6105, uh, but I also enjoy the fact that this is a tribute to Naomi Uemura, famous Japanese explorer. I think that that couldn't have been more fitting, uh, a more positive uh, pairing between an individual and a watch design. So I really enjoy that myself. And then also the fact that this watch is done in Seiko's first color scheme in a dive watch, hearkening back to 1965 with the 62 MAS. A lot of people, when they think of Seiko divers, they're thinking of, uh, you know, they're thinking of a Patty or they're thinking of a Zimbi or a basic black or perhaps an orange dial with gilt or gold accenting. Or some people think of the distinctive color scheme of the Colonel Pogue Seiko. And not a lot of people think about this anthracite and black pairing, which I think is just so well done when it comes to a good classic retro inspired Seiko diver. Now, let me end with one thing here. I think most of us Seiko fans, we enjoy Seiko's affordable offerings the most. We think they offer great value. Uh, but if I'm honest with myself, they don't make many affordable watches these days. Uh, well, maybe they do, uh, but they just don't seem to pack that value punch in the way that they used to five, six, seven years ago. And so I look at this SLA-051, and although this is priced at $2,900 full retail, I still feel that it offers solid value for money. When I consider that gorgeous and sophisticated ADL movement, when I consider the lovely above average finishing and dial details and nicer bezel action, uh, really, I look at the overall package here and I think it's one of the most overlooked premium level Seiko divers on the market. And it's watches like this one and this turtle here that I just enjoy. It's a classic bare bones Seiko doing all of the things that I think they do really well. And it's probably signifying a return of me to a phase that I previously enjoyed in my watch collector journey. And that is enjoying classic Seiko divers. I'm probably going to be buying more here in the coming months and years. So thanks for watching today. I really appreciate it. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And please subscribe for more content like this. Thank you.
Now let's see what other watches Exquisite has sent for me to review. Now I've, I've been borrowing watches from them for years and uh, obviously I've been buying watches from them for years. If you're looking for a great family owned AD here in the United States with good selection, good customer service, I'll definitely recommend them and we'll link them below. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's see what else we got here. I don't know exactly what they've sent. Uh, so let's start here in the corner and we have a Grand Seiko. I think this is called the Sakura. It's a smaller size 44 GS case with a gorgeous pink dial, a uh, texturized dial, mechanical movement. Ooh, this one is just beautiful. I'm going to show my wife this. I, I hope she likes it, but <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. She's not a watch enthusiast like I am and like most of you watching this video. The next one is a 38 mil Speedmaster. I have not seen one of these in person, so I'm looking forward to getting into some uh, more detail on this. I know it's very moderately priced at under six thousand uh, dollars. We'll get obviously we'll get into all the details in the full review, but uh, just a sneak peek of what to expect. And okay, this one I am extra excited about. This is an Hublot Spirit of Big Bang. I know this is, I think they call it the Black Magic, but it's a micro-blasted ceramic case with an open work movement, very technically impressive when it comes to the materials and the specs of the movement. I think this is gorgeous and has presence. And I'm, I'm, it's probably going to be my favorite watch of the box. Uh, it's a little outside my personal watch budget at the moment, but this is something that I would absolutely rock on a day-to-day -day basis. And I know not every watch collector appreciates Hublot, but when you take a look at their designs, when you take a look at what they're doing tech-wise and with cutting-edge materials, I find them a very impressive brand. And so I'm really excited to, uh, <laughs> to do that video. Looks like we have a Longines here. Yes, okay, awesome. This is the new Hydro Conquest GMT. Uh, obviously on a bracelet. And this is just been a smash hit for Longines. I think it's a phenomenal model. It has a lot of value to it. A true GMT, obviously ceramic and just uh, really nice finish work, color match date. Uh, and this has been the color that I've most looked forward to seeing. I've reviewed the blue. I've reviewed the olive green. I think the black looks nice, but the brown, the Sunray brown, it's not a dial color that you see very often. And in person, <laughs> this really sings. So that is very exciting. Now we have a Blanc Pond. This is a 50 Fathoms Tech. It's a large titanium piece. It has a very impressive movement. I think the styling, you know, it's more, I would say more of an acquired taste, but... Um, an impressive dive watch nonetheless. That's going to be a fun one to film. And then we have another watch that I have not seen in person. This one is the X33 Speedmaster from Omega. Uh, I think this is called the Mars Timer, if I'm remembering properly. But it's crafted out of titanium, and it's, it's really interesting. So uh, I'm excited to play with that one as well. And then it looks like there's one more watch. This one is an Accutron. 